The most gruesome episode in Syria's uprising is quickly turning into a PR battle as each side and their allies portion blame for the slaughter in Hula. Just four days after the murders of over 100 men, women and children, the media has been flooded with images furthering one or the other agenda. And as RT Sarah Firth reports, authenticity has taken a backseat. When the BBC ran this photo from Iraq, mistakenly claiming it was Syria, it led to some fierce criticisms. Somebody is using my images from Iraq as propaganda against the Syrian government to prove the massacre. I'm really surprised that an organisation like the BBC cannot be bothered to check sources and is ready to publish any image sent by a citizen activist or journalist or whoever they are. The BBC is, is like a British bombing club. It always supports NATO's wars, and uh, even though there's no conspiracy, the reporter, whoever wrote this, I'm sure they weren't told to, is part of a general malaise in the BBC that always calls for intervention and the use of NATO bombardment on developing nations. But from the very beginning, the Syrian crisis has seemed to be distorted and blurred at every turn and by both sides. Throughout the last months, the world's seen fake video reports and false statements, but this hasn't quelled the sensation-hungry media from jumping the gun on any shocking piece of news coming from the country ravaged by conflict. Amidst calls that the peace plan is now failing, Kofi Annan visited Damascus. In his statement, he said, I urge the government to take bold steps to signal that it is serious in its intention to resolve this crisis peacefully. And this message of peace is not only for the government, but for everyone, every individual with a gun. But while many media outlets loudly condemn the regime, there has been little criticism of the open and blatant funding and arming of the Syrian opposition, a move that has served to massively undermine ceasefire attempts. And now the war drums again seem to be beating. John Rees from the Stop the War Coalition called this the Benghazi moment, the moment where things are portrayed as being so bad that there's no other option but intervention. Some of us who've been around long enough will remember the outcry in the Western press and from Western governments over similar uh, occasions in Kosovo. We'll remember the way in which the uh, Saddam Hussein regime was characterised because of its atrocities in, uh, in, in Iraq. The same rhetoric, John says, could lead to even more lives lost. We saw what happened in Libya with this. Everybody understood that the Gaddafi regime um, was, a, uh, was a horrible dictatorship. But when the West intervened, we ended up with 30,000 dead. Already, it's estimated that more than 10,000 lives have been lost in the conflict, the death toll continuing to rise, even whilst the UN observers have been in the country. But inside Syria and amidst the devastation, there is still a hope for a Syria that doesn't involve repression or intervention. We are completely against arming the uprising, as well as we are against foreign intervention. We declared that very clear, very loud. The mistake made by the BBC goes to show the real problems when covering the Syrian conflict. But the events of recent weeks have also shown that the mudslinging, finger-pointing and accusations that have been such a mark of the Syrian crisis have only served to move us further away and not closer to the truth. And it's a truth that people in Syria have been paying for with their lives. Sarah Firth, RT, London. And commenting on the BBC's blunder with the Iraq picture, journalist and human rights investigator Keith Harmon Snow says there's simply no way it could have been posted by mistake. This particular photograph claiming to be a massacre of children in Syria was used for a major element of propaganda, accusing Saddam Hussein's government of killing all these children off in the first place. So it was a nasty piece of propaganda. It was very well known where this photograph came from. If people believe that this is accidental or if it's, it's citizen journalism, they're really deceiving themselves. These images are certainly used to peddle the war. It's the manufacture of consent, as we were given by uh, the book by Noam Chomsky, for example. So the claim that we can't get journalists into Syria, I think, is nonsense. There are CIA agents, there are MI6 agents, there are Mossad agents all over the place in Syria at this very moment, as they were in Libya. 
manufacturing false images about Libya, claiming to be YouTube videos or citizen journalism. You can see from the label activist, a photo from activists. I mean, that's nonsense too. The BBC just doesn't do that. They don't pull down photos from an activist and post them without everything they do is fact checked. This is propaganda, no mistake, no accident.